Well, good evening, everybody. I suppose you are very, very welcome. And uh, I suppose I grew up in Buffers Alley and I spent nearly every night in the field, but I, I never expected to be on a Zoom call or this kind of a, a call with Tony and Colm Dorn. But just to say to Tony and Colm, they're both very, very welcome. And uh, I suppose they're unusual times. Uh, I, I don't know how you're coping with the lockdown, Colm, or is it, is it affecting you badly out there? Well, Tom, I wouldn't be out as much as you are, so it doesn't affect me that much, really. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you, I'm not out that much either. Are you missing all the matches, Tony? You are. You're, it's, hard, oh, it's, hard, it's hard to get going this weather, isn't it? Well, I, yeah, sure. Uh, no matches to go to would be a big thing, but sure, you just have to do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a tough time. And a tough time for a lot of families as well, and maybe people that lose people as well. Now it's, it's heavy oh, yeah. out going, you know. But anyway, folks, tonight I'm speaking to I'd say two-fifths of the Doran household. Sadly, Sean passed away a few years ago and probably half of the, the hurling Doran household. And I suppose just to give people an idea of what I'm talking, if they need uh, need any reminding, but I could be corrected here, but I think between the two of you, you have 18 senior hurling county titles in Wexford, both All-Stars, six Leinster inter-county senior hurling titles uh, between you. And again, I could be wrong on some of these. Uh, All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship medal, three National Hurling League titles. I think just under a dozen Railway Cups. I think there's only 11 Railway Cups, just didn't didn't make the round dozen. Texaco Hurler of the Year, Hall of Fame, All-Ireland Minor under 21, Leinster. I could go on and today Martin Brehany, or yesterday was, he had you in the uh, the top 20 Wexford Hurlers. I, you, were, you were number one column and you were well up there as well of the, of the last 50 years. So it's fairly safe to say that the two men I'm talking to have done it all and uh, you know and, and it is my privilege to be talking to you even though because we used to we used to talk in every direction when we were on the field together and that you know but I was just going to say maybe kicking off there Tony it, uh, you've been asked it a thousand times but your earliest memories of, of hurling or you know I know that maybe your dad was a big influence or what, what when, when you think back what what do you think back on earliest times? Well I suppose the earliest times I can think back on Tom would be uh, you know Hurling in uh, our own field at home. That's where the club used to train. Little field used to be across the road from where we lived, or maybe just up the road from it. Different at different times, it changed to different fields, and uh, you know that would be uh, would be my uh, earliest memory of, of hurling, and then going into uh, with uh, my father and uh, and that into the showgrounds in Gory, where the lads would be playing junior matches and so forth. You know, so I would have uh, been quite familiar with all the lads from uh, from an early an early age. And at that stage that uh, the oldest of us, Bill, would have been playing with uh, with with, uh, with with the lads and uh, Bill Murphy was a near neighbour of ours and he would have been playing and you know, they were the sort of the ones that we were uh, uh, looking up to as being the superstars at that stage. Very different, and and the intercounty men that time, Tony. Who who would you have been following or be your biggest hero at that time? Well, sure, the, yeah, yeah, on the on the intercounty scene, you know, that, uh, I suppose it was a good time to be growing up. That uh, Wexford won the All Ireland in 1955, 1956. You know, won in 55. I was uh, I was nine, nine, nine at the time, and you know, I can well remember I wasn't at the match or anything. That. Yeah. Uh, the first time I can recall having been in the uh, in Croke Park was actually for the 1955 All Ireland uh, semi final against Limerick. That was the my first uh, first trip to Croke Park. But uh, I say we probably left about six o'clock in the morning to get there. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, but then the crowd would be too big. Wasn't brought to the final or wasn't at the final in '56. But you know, I'm sure. The one that everyone talked about at the time was Nicky Racker, and uh, he was the the, the go to man for, uh, for 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 everyone, you know, and he was the he he was really, you know, all we seen was uh, what we heard from uh, Michal O'Hare on the radio, what we read on the on the papers. That there was no television or anything at that stage. Yeah, we still, you know, nearly knew everything he was doing without seeing him. Yeah, yeah, he was he was a kind of an iconic film. We're lucky that we've had over the years. That was kind of, yourself, Colin. You were you you were a bit younger than other fellas, so I, you you probably came a little bit later. But you, your earliest memories, Colin, would be my earliest memories is was the same. We started in our own little field across the road, and uh, probably the earliest memories is I was a few years younger. I probably had to play against uh, the wall on my own, maybe tutored by my father. I I have to say, actually. 
Yeah. And uh, actually, then we had our own little games with uh, Tony and Joe and Jack Hart and myself. Yeah. Even though I was three or four years younger than, than them, but it was, uh, I think it was myself and Joe. Joe was the eldest. But I always had to play the goal because yeah. it was too small to play on the other ends. But we had our own little games. Yeah. And, and the boys probably went, the early... the boys probably went easy on you, Callum, did they? Oh, they did, yeah. They did, yeah. <laughs> the earliest memories was the same. Like Bill, our own Bill at home was on the on the Annie team and played with the county intermediate team in the one dollar in sixty one. Like Bill Murphy, uh, the same, the two local superstars. And uh we went to all the local junior matches with Tom Doho and you see the hall the lads were playing in it. And I think that's where the hall started, really. Yeah. And um, like the same with the county. The records, everyone, Jim Morrissey, Wheeler, everyone. And those, like, they were household names. And I think Mihal O'Hare brought them to us. We were nearly there. We weren't at the match, but it looked like we were there. Yeah. And yeah. there were great days. Like, Willie Record, I'd say, was, was my hero at the time. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 go, I go back as well. as well. I suppose I'll, I'll get this one out of the way now because Ed Rousham was on to me during the week. He heard we were going to chat. And I, I was just saying, Ed is a, a great hurling man, but... He always felt had the Dorns hurled with Mona Gear that it would have changed the 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 uh, I suppose altered the history of both parishes very much. Where is the house? Is the house in the alley, Tony, or is it in Mona Gear Parish, or where is the house? To put it to bed forevermore. Well, as far as we are aware, I say there's about uh, two thirds of the house in uh, Bullhawk Parish and one third in uh, in uh, in uh, Monaghan Parish. And that is, uh, I think, the, the, the fact of, of what it is. Colin will tell you they are better than he's still living there at the moment. And, and that's just about where it is uh, it's situated. That the, 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 there was an old laneway at the, at the back of the house, you know, back of the yard, and that was supposed to be the dividing line of the, of the two parishes. Yeah. Because the, the field that came to the end of the house was in, uh, was in uh, one of the parish, and the uh, field at the other end of the house was in Bull Old Parish. So... Couldn't be much closer. Couldn't we, we were a bit lucky then. <laughs> we all probably we all lived in the in the room that was in the one of the lane, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well that's fair enough. I hey, Colin, you don't you don't have to I'm happy enough that just went in our direction anyway. But actually it was Colin or Willie was telling me there the other day that um mo, kind of Bull of Og and Mona Malin were more joined, say back nineteen oh five and along I'm not going to go back that far, but it was only in recent years, I suppose, that Kilmockridge and, and Monomalin became a part of one, is it? Yeah, so our knowledge back in the when my father was playing in the twenties and all along there it was the kind of the two half parishes more or less played together. Yeah. And Kilmockridge had her own team. So yeah. I don't know what way, you know, whether parish boundaries didn't come into it then or what, I don't know. Yeah. Actually. But that that was actually the way it was, I think. Yeah, I know it's 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 an interesting one because I think you actually addressed it in the book as well, Tony. You were you were saying somebody had said the gable end of the house was was in the buffer Alley Parish, so uh, that's good enough for us anyway, as the fella says. You know, I suppose just moving on, Tony. The 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 early sixties. I won't say the alley didn't have a tradition because they always had a tradition of hurling, but it was a different environment. It was probably a different when you came on underage for county teams. I do remember hearing that you scored four goals in the Leinster final under 21 and, and you didn't play in the All-Ireland final or they didn't start you in the All-Ireland final. Probably a big tactical move, but was it hard because you were probably the first one to make the real breakthrough. Was it hard to come from an unfashionable club that time, Tony, and, and make the breakthrough? Well, I suppose it was... Uh... Uh, a bit difficult that uh, you know, I was lucky enough that I got on the minor team in uh, 63, won in All Ireland, and you know, I got on reasonably well and and uh, came then playing 21 the following year. And it was, uh, it was uh, actually in the Leicester semi final against Dublin, I had scored six goals. <laughs> <laughs> Panel for the All Ireland. <laughs> and you don't mind me asking what happened? <laughs> or did, did you go missing or something? <laughs> uh, well, I had been I had I had been injured. I, I remember I got injured in a in a club game minor semi final, maybe one month or so before. And uh, uh, I had that use that use as an excuse then why I wasn't on, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, so then you know, sure, I just uh, was looking enough then to get a few breaks along the way and get on to the senior team. Yeah, and you 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 picked up every underage medal, Tony. You won minor and under twenty one, didn't you? Played in. Uh, that's right. Yeah. 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 
the, 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 the first uh, the first championship medal of any sort that I won was a lesser minor medal in 63 that uh, we had won no championships with uh, with club or anything else I think I had won uh, one uh, to- junior tournament medal with the club before that that oh. was the the soul and out of what, what I had won and you know sort of things took off from there and thanks be to God uh, we took off club boys as well yeah, God, it sure did. And I was just saying, Colm, you kind of, as I say, a little bit later on, but you, you under twenty one, you played, you played. We've established you played in three All Ireland finals anyway, in under twenty one. That I, I, it was a great launch pad for Wexford, I suppose, for the seventies. But it, it must have been disappointing to lose, lose the three finals at the same time, was it? We played uh, Cork in uh, the Cork Cup final in Cork had played in the All Ireland the week before it. And we played and drew a game that we should have had won it, but we drew, went back a couple of weeks later, and I'm afraid Cork hurled really well against us. Cork, yeah. I think, had five or six of their, their senior panel playing that day. Yeah. But they were a good, good, a good lot of that team went ahead and played senior with Wexford after. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of that would have populated the, probably the 76, 77 teams, wouldn't it? They would, yeah. And... Uh, also, when Tony was under 21 along in 66 and along there, a lot of that team was, was playing with Wexford in 76 as well. Yeah, yeah. It was some it was some golden era, really, when you when you think back. I mean, Wexford were in All-Ireland Finals every other day. But just back to the alley there, I suppose. <clears throat> the alley, I know that they, they, they took the jump from junior to intermediate, one intermediate in 65. But then it really all started happening. And, and I suppose... Towards the end of, of of the decade, why did it all start happening, or was there a bit of luck, or we, did we just have a an awful lot of talented people come at one time, Tony? Well, I suppose we had a, a good show. Uh, you know, young fellas come along. Uh, we never had an awful lot of success at uh, <coughs> underage, but we probably maybe had uh, six or seven fairly strong underage players, but we never had enough to have uh, what they call a strong. A strong, a strong team enough to uh, contest for there was no division one two three or four that time it was all uh, it was all uh, you know the one the one great but um you know we, we wanted to read in uh, 60 in 65 with a sort of um, you know a lot of young fellas and uh, six or seven uh, you know uh, experienced fellas as well that uh, they were able to sort of uh, you know look after us as we moved up along and we went on to in senior, we got as far as quarter final or first year in senior, and uh, the following year then we went to uh, the whole way to the county final against Rathmore, and as we thought we were going uh, great guns, but uh, we had a rude awake when we went to, when we went up in the final against Rathmore. It was uh, they were in a, a different league, you yeah. know. We were we were beaten out the gate in Patrick's Park. That uh, we we were never never at races. And I suppose it was a county final, and it was a little bit uh, maybe that uh, we were in o- o- over our head a sort of. Yeah. But you often wonder would you, would you know, when, when would you ever get back there again? So mm. as things turned out, the following year we we got going again. We played the Harriers in the first round of the championship and played a draw. Uh, in the replay, uh, the Harriers beat us by a point, and uh, so you know that the, the previous year we had also played the Harriers in the championship in '67 and played a draw, and we won the replay. So inside of less than twelve months, we had played the Harriers four times and uh, uh, two draws, and uh, we won once and they won once. So you know that the, uh, there was a, a losers group then in the senior hurling in in. Uh, 68, and we came back along through the losers group and got five or six matches and uh, the things were sort of put on hold while Wexford were involved in the All-Ireland and we played, you know, nearly every 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 Sunday for, for a while and we got on a bit of a roll and we found ourselves in the final against the Harriers again on the 8th of December. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that the uh, Harriers were firm favourites for it. Everyone said we had no hope. But, uh, you know, we felt ourselves that we had a, had a chance that, as I said, in the you know the sort of the previous twelve months we played the Harriers four times one win one win one win each and two draws and uh, we won the final then by a point in the odds. Yeah, and most of I mean you you were only a chap that time, Colin. That was your first year, Colin, was it? Or? That's the first year playing. Yeah, that's the first uh, year. Playing. It must have been the most special time. That time, you know, did, did, did 
you just went into extra. You didn't have a meal after or anything like that. Or what did what did you do afterwards? Or did you <laughs> did you just went home basically? Did you? I think uh, I think that time I think they went to Joe News probably in the start. He possibly went to Hall's restaurant. I think for maybe for uh, for some uh, sandwiches, I'd say. Yeah. And uh, but it was a different time that. Uh, Playing with all the lads, I was there was a few of us young lads on myself, Larry Harney, Mick Butler, were all the younger lads and Joe Murphy, Lee Murphy, Bill Murphy, Bill Lorne, Paddy Sinus, they were all still there. Actually, Paddy missed the final with sickness. And uh, John Doyle as well was in for to hold up the corner for us. No better and, man. Uh, no better man. <laughs> and like you know, that we can we got going from there, I think, and uh, were great years ahead of us. Like you know, we were always in the in the running in the latter end of the championship for years after. And, and I'll ask you this one, Colm, because I I, I say Tony might can comment on it, but the Harriers rate points up would uh, would it be right with maybe 12, 14 minutes to go? And you had the oh, Willie Murphy yeah. controversy. Willie Willie says to this day he shouldn't have been put off, and I'm not going to say you're going to say he should have been put off. But it, 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 did that impact the match, or was it just? Bill Murphy's magic, basically, at the, at the end of it all. I, you know, I heard he had a great last 12 or 15 minutes as well. Well, the first one, Tom, uh, we didn't have uh, video evidence or anything like that <laughs> at the time. And, yeah. and actually, I didn't see it. So yeah. I'm, taking, I'm taking the <laughs> the, 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 the county manager's view on it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyhow, that probably, maybe, when it came, but sometimes you're down to 14 men and the team plays better. You can That's look true. back and wait for the Tipperary last year. Yeah. But Bill Murphy's magic at the end of the day yeah. was Bill, Bill stood up and took a bit of scruff at the neck and we got on a roll and like every, every, he, he turned to gold with it now. Yeah, yeah. It, it, must been, over hole. it must have been the most incredible feeling, Tony, really, first championship in, in, in a club, you know, that I won't say came from nothing, but came from, from small beginnings, I suppose, didn't they? Oh, yeah, sure. From, from uh, very, very, very small beginnings. You know, that, uh, that uh, I can... Remember when we started first? I remember playing uh, that time. There was no uh, Christian and no granting 12, 14, or anything. Your first grade to play in was uh, under 16 juvenile. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, the first time that uh, we had a team in that for a good many years was in 59, and a lot of us were only like of uh, uh, myself, Jack Hall, Terry Murphy, fellas like that were only about 13 at the time. Peary Butler was, I think, 12. I think Hart would have been playing and he was less than 11. You know, yeah. making up a team. I can well remember uh, Cranford beating us in Gorey in the first round of the championship by, I think, seven or eight goals. And yeah. we had uh, seven or eight of those fellas won a senior championship uh, in 1968. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And I remember you said earlier, Colm, that lads minded you at that time. But I remember the first time I ever heard with the alley, it was 82, Tony, and Peary gave me a tap before it says, go out to the wing there now and don't come back in, that I tell you, he says. So, and I knew, you know, it, it was, Peary was a real legend, really, wasn't he? You know, he was he, he, he was a great man. But I, I, if you don't mind me then just moving on, uh, Colm, maybe just to the, to the 1970 final. I mean, it was reputedly our greatest performance but, you know, the saddest day, really, you know, and I, I, I suppose I don't know how it asked, but what would your memories of that 70 final be, I suppose? It, it was a tough day. So it was, it was a very tough day, Tom, and uh, in hindsight, actually, this, I didn't know until the match was over, actually. And I think some of the other lads had a, had an idea that, that my father had, well, whether he had got a turn or passed away or what, we didn't know. But I actually didn't know until it was over, and it was one of our perfect performances. That's all I could yeah. describe it as. And yeah. the one thing I can remember is at the finish of the game, that normally where you'd have people coming into you and jumping all over you and all this, it was as if there was a disease that yeah. no one came in. I can remember the first one came in was uh, Dr. O'Gorman and Rory had told me. And uh, like, you know, that, that was... Uh, Tough day, that's all I could describe it. Like, you know, probably a far tougher day for my mother at home, like, you know. Of course, yeah, it did. It, well, and Tony, you know, again, what what do you say about something like that, really, you know? Oh, yeah, it's something that I'd say that, uh, you know, had happened. And uh, I actually, I knew he had done a turn because yeah. I'd seen him going off in the stretcher. Yes, yeah. Uh, 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 I, I, I don't know how the player was seen at the other end of the field. And I don't know how I happened to glance behind me. 
and 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 uh, and seeing a bit of a commotion and somebody going off on a on a stretcher at the back of the town hall. And uh, I turned back again out the field, and I don't know what made me look back again. And I happened to see uh, Pat Nolan, who was playing in the goal for Wexford at that stage, going along behind it, and he seen me looking around as well, and he he came towards me and said, "It's okay." Got it. He got a bit of a turn, but he's already. Yeah. That was, that was it. That was it. It was, it, it, ah, it, it was very sad. And I, I remember actually, and I'm, again, I, I, I don't want to overdwell, but in 76, I was only a chap myself coming out, and I, I was actually coming out behind Tom Butler, another great Buffers Alley man, and, and I always remember the dressing room. And, you know, it, it does put things into perspective. There's no doubt about it, kind of as such. You know, I suppose going back a little bit, Tony, to 67, you, you by God, you hit the ground running. You had a National League title and an All-Ireland title. We were lucky enough to see it the other day on television. You, you, you were sweeping the boards very early, really, weren't you? I'm not sure. I suppose I, I got a few breaks at that stage, won the National League in uh, in 67 and then won the All-Ireland in uh, 68, you know, so. Yeah, and it was Kilkenny in 67, was it? That that was that was probably our first really big day in, in Crow Park, Tony, or was that in Crow Park, it was? It was in Crow Park, yeah, the league final in Crow Park, that would yeah. be Kilkenny, and they, they came around and turned the tables on us in the in the Leicester final, and they went on to win the All-Ireland. So the following year, then, uh, we beat Kilkenny, and we won the All-Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So, it was very often, you know, and for many years, Wexford were either the second or the first best team in the country. And sometimes you only got one one shot at it, really, you know. All along at that time, it was, uh, you know, Wexford Kilkenny, there was only a, a poke of the ball at any stage. Yeah. But uh, Kilkenny seemed to win all Ireland's after beating us, but we didn't seem to win them after beating them. <laughs> we, we, see, we seemed to be happy enough to beat them, but I will, we, we didn't do too bad either. But I was just, I was looking at the 68 All Ireland at the weekend. I, I never heard as many people talking about a game. But uh, it was real typical Wexford. Like there was an 18 point swing, I think. The tip went 10 up, Tony, did they? And then we went 8 up. And yet, we proceeded almost to let him back into it. I know, did, did you think the game was over when we went eight up? Or we seemed to, 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 to lie down very, I don't mean lie down, God, there was nobody lying down, but we, we nearly let it go at the very end of it again, didn't we? Well, sir, I, I suppose it was a, a strange start of a, a game that, uh, you know, a big lead of uh, six or eight points was nothing in it, really. Because, uh, you know, when uh, I didn't realise it myself until I looked at it there on Sunday, I say, it uh, um, it was eight goals scored in the game. We scored five. Kilkenny scored, or the Murray scored three. And I safely say there could have been eight more scored. That's right. That, uh, that I can recall in the second half, I know I missed a sitter myself when I was one on one with John O'Donoghue. Jack Berry missed another one when he was one on one. That was, you know, two sitters apart from anything else. And Tip had two or three chances as well. And thanks be to God they didn't take them until it was nearly over. Yeah, it was a real game of two halves because the, the first half, they did have a good lot of chances as well. And I'd say, that we, remember, we got a goal before, not before half time, but to kind of bring us back into it, which which gave us a lifeline, a kind of a switch. But the, I think what people were amazed by the game was, I think, the excitement at the end of it. And also, like, it, it was fair tough hurling, <laughs> wasn't it? It was, it was, it was tough hurling. But, you know, I say in... Um... You know, looking back on it, that, uh, we sort of took over in the second half. That uh, in, I said, uh, the ball very, very seldom passed our half back line. That uh, Dan Quigley was was a really outstanding centre back. Willie Murphy on the on, on the left, and Vinnie Staples on the other side. That uh, the amount of ball that uh, that they hurled up the field to uh, to the you know to the forwards was unreal. And um, Paul Lynch had went in centre forwards, was playing on McRoach. Mick Roach had been outstanding and continued, but Mick Roach liked to play back a sort of in front of the full back line. Yeah. Paul Lynch moved out to 60, 70 yards from the goal and he was putting the ball in over Mick Roach's head and uh, sort of, uh, you know, taking him out of the game. Yeah. And, you know, that that that, uh, that worked fairly, fairly well for us because inside, um, myself and Jack Berry and uh, Jimmy O'Brien, you know, had... Um, uh, got the measure of the of the of the of the of the tip full back line that I think between the between the three of us we have scored three five over four or five in the second half. Yeah. You know, so and I think an awful lot, you know, came from the from uh, the dominance of our uh, half back line and uh, and and uh, Phil Wilson as well in the middle of the field and then Paul Lynch centre forward that yeah. were taking sort of any or Tipperary's half back line out of the game. Yeah. And I, I noticed Tony I, I 
you know, would have missed the Pat Nolan era, but by God, he came out and caught a ball in the second half. Wow. <laughs> I must tell you, he took his life in his own hands, but it was it was some <laughs> inspirational thing to do now, I have to say, you know. Must have been, there must have been, I'd say, a dozen hardly swinging at the time. Oh, absolutely. And tell me you know, one last thing on, on 68, the... the that night then, there was no Sunday game banquets, obviously, or that. You came straight back down to Wexford, did you, or did you stay up there that night? I stayed, uh, stayed, in, uh, stayed in Bray, in the old international hotel in Bray. It's no longer there. That's uh, where Wexford used to stay that time, and uh, that uh, stayed there. But there was no, uh, there was a, a meal and a half, there was no, no big banquet or anything like that. And, you yeah. know, no crowds around it or anything and, and like that, I think just a few. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot less fuss that time. A little bit less, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you're in, you're interviewed after it as well. I was I was I was watching your. I, I, you reminded me of Pat. Now I have to say you were very like Pat in the interview after. Now you know. So there, that's that's an aside anyway. And then seventy, Tony, the first eighty minute fine. It just didn't go extra. You got two goals yourself, but just didn't go Wexford's way really. No, we were we were we were we were well beaten. Now, uh, okay, we went into it under a bit of a cloud that uh, we played. Played well now in the lesser final of Beacon Kenny. Kenny were all earned champions in 69. And we beat them, uh, uh, you know, five or six points, I think, in the, in, uh, in, uh, the lesser final of 70. But we lost uh, between the lesser final and uh, the all earned final. We lost Phil Wilson, Ned Boogie, and uh, what else? There was a third one as well. That, uh, uh, I don't Did Tom Neville hurl in that final? It... Tom Neville was actually sick. He played in the final. But he, he he should he shouldn't have been yeah. uh, shouldn't have been playing. Oh, Willie Murphy was the was the third one we lost. Yeah, yeah. So you know that uh, they were three 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 big names gone out of the team, and Tom Devil <laughs> was uh, oh, uh, struggling big time. They had the flu the whole week before, so we were sort of four down before the match started, and we couldn't afford to do that against Cork. Absolutely, yeah. And Colm, you you made your debut in seventy one. I think I'm right in saying you for some reason did you play in the championship in seventy two. But obviously, then things really took off again. Seventy three for you won an All Star, won a National Hurling League medal. But do you remember when you major or when you major debut for Wexford Column? And... Actually, I think the, my debut for Wexford was so my memory. I think it was Wexford against the rest of Leinster. Yeah, uh, if, if it was counted as a trial for the Leinster team at the time, but I think that was when I made my debut. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure who, if I'm not mistaken, it could have been Johnny Welsh. Right, yeah. It it a a wasteful man, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's class hurler, it's class hurler. But, you, you, uh, you, that's came, started. you came across him again against our clock a few years later. He played against, I remember up in our clock, it was a tough day enough for us as well. That's right, well. that's right, yeah. yeah sure. Oh, yeah. Johnny, Johnny and Ned, two great, Johnny was really a top class hurler and Ned was a, Ned was a workhorse. That's what Ned, Ned, Ned done the work and Johnny done the score. Yeah, yeah. Two great hurlers. And, and did you you made your you played in the Leinster final that year then, Colm? Obviously, played, played, I played for seventy one every every year along then. I missed no year actually yeah. until I played till eighty two. Yeah, yeah eighty two. And and then of and course uh, you, bet, you, you bet himself to the All Star in seventy three then, Colm. You 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 got one on the board. That must have been a great honour as well that year. You know. I don't know where that came from, but. Uh, that time you didn't know really anything was. It was top secrecy and everything. And the only thing you had a, an idea if you were an all star was if the cameraman came to take a photograph. Yeah. And uh, there was a cameraman came to take a photograph, didn't say what it was for or anything else. And we had an idea that's what it was then. So we got confirmation about a week later, I think it was. Yeah. And you, tour, you toured America then with that or whatever, Colin, did you? Or did... Yeah, we're over, we're over in uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles that time, yeah. Yeah. Stayed with a uh, stayed with a Wexford man actually, Tom Cavanaugh and Grant Ford. All right, yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, yeah, ah, there, there were great times. And Tony, I suppose then seventy one to seventy five was kind of a tale of Rat Newer and Kilkenny in club and county, a kind of a such. And I suppose the closest maybe club wise we came that that time was maybe the seventy three final was disappointing. I I'll bring you back probably to the to the great goal that was scored that we didn't get and I'm not, not blaming anyone or but I actually was at that game but uh it was that was a I'd say that was a particular disappointment because the alley hurled well that day even though they were without Mick Butler Mick was Mick wasn't available uh, that day. It, it was a good performance wasn't it? Oh yeah we had a, had a good performance in seventy three and uh, you know a very small thing could have uh, could have uh, maybe won the game that day. But uh, you know right you were at, uh, at that time were an exceptional team you know yeah. they were 
there was something else. And uh, you know, I think that uh, that uh, we played maybe uh, in the circumstances we played a little bit above ourselves, maybe, and uh, you know, could have could have nicked it, but uh, in the end, right, you were were able to uh, you know get a couple of scores in the end of it that uh, that uh, saw them through. Yeah, yeah, and and Colum then on to seventy five, which I know probably was one of. The, the best feelings of victories. I know the the Owlert rivalry. I suppose that people are married to each other from Owlert and Buffers Alley, but it's it's one of the great rivalries out there, Colm, isn't it? You know, looking back. Well, there's always rivalries which are what you call your next door neighbours. But at the end of the day, it was you get to a county final, no matter who you're playing, you want to win the county. And it was nice to win against Owlert, but you know that we always knew the Owlert day were going to, was going to come as well. Yeah. I had won, uh, you talk about Buffer Sally and Owlert, we had played under 21 together. The first ch- match, the first championship I ever won was a minor final uh, where we united with Owlert. That yeah. was 60, 67. Yeah. And like, you know, we, we knew each other well and we knew that they had great, good players all along and we were just maybe the established team but we were able to just get through on the day, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't much in it, a goal or two, that's all. Yeah, yeah, it was. I my my. It's kind of. I won't say it's my earliest. My earliest memory would be seventy four when Owlert won in Belfield, and uh, then seventy five. It was. It was just. It was, it was amazing around Kilmuckridge that time because vocational school was there, and it's just. It just. It, it was everything. It was kind of everything, and and I think that's a tribute to Owlert as well, Tony. In that, but you know, they they did persevere in years that it looked like they weren't going to get over the line, and you'd have to admire them for what they did after, really. Oh Jesus! Uh, Albert made a, a a massive contribution to uh, to Portland and Wexford in that uh, in that period for, and for uh, a lot of years after. It. You know that they uh, they were there in seventy four to beat us in the semi final. Lost to Rack, you were in the final in uh, seventy five. Uh, they beat Rack, you were in the semi final. Was lost to us in the in the in the final. You know that uh, on any given year, maybe they were able to beat one of us, but not be two of us. Whereas um, you know that uh, ourselves and Rack you were didn't hit up against one another that often in the uh, in, in semi finals. Maybe we were lucky in that way, and that uh, you know we were more or less there ready for the for the big day then. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I know they, and I said just on then. I suppose one thing for me in seventy six and seventy seven. I suppose what made it very special and maybe give rise to a breed of young hurlers in Buffers Alley to an extent was that we had five alley men on the uh, Wexford panel in 76 and 77. There were, there were great years, but I'm sure, Colm, you look back and say, Christ, we, we, we should have won one of them at least. Yeah, well, I often think, like, you know, that maybe this, that hard team had beaten us in under 21. It beat, it beat Tony's. Teams when they were 21. It beat my years and they'd won the All Ireland in 70. It was a great car team as well, you have to yeah. say, in fairness. They won three in a row and were very unlucky that the next year they were beaten in the semi final, they, they could have nearly won four in a row. And I have to say, it was a, it was a great car team. That small little thing could have won it. That I often thought, like, that maybe had Dan Quigley, Phil Wilson been available. It could have been something that could have swung, swung across the door for us, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you can you can be unlucky as well. I mean, my memory of a column is, was Jimmy Barry Murphy was probably the greatest, one of the greatest forwards ever. And just on the day, you had absolutely kind of tied him up and hurled him out of it really that then. And maybe, just maybe, I know it's easy to say after, maybe we could have, and I know you're not going to comment, but you, we could have maybe moved yourself across on him, uh, kind of as such, you know, because there was our half back line were brilliant that day. Absolutely brilliant. But, you know, maybe little things like that. And I suppose Tony, and maybe you're not going to come up, Paddy Johnson, his decision not to give you free in with, with a, a couple of minutes to go and we were three points up. It had a big, now I, I, again, it's not easy to referee and whatever, but I'd say when you got up off the ground, you thought you were getting free in that time, did you? Well, it's all right. Say everyone in Croke Park thought it was a free in, Tom. Yeah, yeah. So, and it was a free in, you know, let's be fair. No, even, uh, I just uh, seen a hand, uh, I looked at a bit of a hand on, on, on telly there uh, the, other, uh, the other night, Saturday night. And uh, and uh, I didn't look at it all. I couldn't. I couldn't stop looking at it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I looked at it. I just uh, looked at that at that, I, that incident to see what I, what I, what I thought, you know. And 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 uh, uh, and uh, you know, even me all hair commentating 
on the middle of set, free into Wexford. That's right. That's oh, right. and and and, and uh, uh, you know I have uh, even you know been talking to Brian Murphy on numerous occasions since. Now Brian will do a smile. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So you see, easy smile. <laughs> That's what it happens that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, it, 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 but it, it was, I think, for a lot of Wexford people, the most memorable. I think I was on Hill 16 that day, what, 76, 11 years of age, and just the crowds and the atmosphere, it, it, it really it really did give rise to, 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 and I remember, I always remember um, when you came back to Mona Malin, I think after 76 All Ireland, just came back on the Monday evening to Mona Malin, and actually that, talking about something that's totally different, but I remember Father Connolly's. Uh, housekeeper, I think Miss Fitzpatrick was her name, but she had a great Wexford jersey on her that night to welcome you back. I don't know if you remember that night, but uh, that was before jerseys became common, as the fella says, you know. But, oh, yeah. uh, but I know it, 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 it's great, and I, and I suppose then from 78 onwards, Wexford at times were the second best team in the, in the country column, you know, and up to the time maybe that you retired yourself. If, did you ever regret that the backdoor system or, or the present system wasn't in place? Because I think Wexford probably would have won. Well, probably, Tom, if, maybe, Tom, if it had to be in place at the time, but it's something that I've never really thought about. That we played in it when it was knockout. You had your chance, you had to go through, or you didn't go through. Yeah. But if there had been a knockout at the time, I think that, you know, that maybe it would have given us a better chance for to be playing more top matches. Yeah, kind of all along during the seventies until Offaly came up. It was Wexford to Kenny every year. Yes, yeah. it was a given from one or the other until Offaly came up. Then and uh, they they became a force in Ireland. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe if there had been more of a spread on it, like you know that sometimes you only had to play one match, you were straight into an All Ireland. Then maybe that's right. Maybe that at the time that maybe you weren't prepared for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it, 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 you're right, Colm. It didn't give you a, a chance to get a level of consistency, you know. And for yeah. teams like that, maybe you know, you, you could have been off. And I suppose even if I look back during that period, Tony, eighty-one, and again you got injured that day. Believe it or not, I was in hospital with you that day. I, I was injured with the in the minor match that day. But again, you could look back and say that that was probably an All Ireland. You know, awfully went to win the All Ireland. You're no guarantees, but. Sometimes I always fancy our chances against the likes of Galway in an All Ireland final, and it was a pity. I'm sure you were very disappointed that day, particularly having to go off so early in that. You know, I, I always uh, felt that uh, that uh, 81 was uh, was a big opportunity to win an All Ireland because I thought we had a, a fairly good blend of uh, you know uh, good few young fellas that come onto the team, like of uh, George O'Connor. John Conran, John Fleming, fellas like that, you know. And then yeah. uh, there was uh, still the core of the of the of the team from the mid seventies there as well. And uh, no, I I felt that uh, we had the, the right mix that uh, to win to win an All Ireland, we beat Kenny in the Leicester semi final. I felt you know that we could go ahead to win an All Ireland that year, but they yeah, were stuck against Offaly in the Leicester final, you know. And, uh, how long how long was gone that day before you went off? I think you're about twelve or fourteen minutes. Yeah, the game hadn't the game had barely started really, you know. And I, I think for everyone, I, I again I was in for at that point, and it was a kind of a collective groan, I think, you know, from the from the Wexford crowd, you know, and it did psychologically hit us that day, Colm. Or what, what were your thoughts that day, Colm? It probably did hit us a bit, but but you know, at the same time, awfully were a coming force at the time. And yeah. they proved that after, like, you know, this that they were well able for to, I don't know what, they had a confidence, they got on a roll, had great players, and probably for a few years before that, they weren't very far behind on yeah. any of those games. Yeah. yeah. And probably did affect us a little bit, all right, but yeah. at the same time, it was early on, we should have overcame it, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Should we nearly did, we nearly won the game anyway, you know, yeah. and, and that's the truth. And uh, then 84, Tony, that was your, that was your last day. In Croker, and I, I, I nearly argue it was nearly the most exciting day. Well, sorry, the second last day, but the Leinster semi final that day was there. There weren't too many goals gave you as much satisfaction as the last one against Kilkenny that day, Tony. Was there? Ah, yeah, sure. It's always nice to uh, to score, Tom. You know, the goals were always nice to score, but uh, uh, you know, and score against Kilkenny at that stage was uh, was it was a uh, you know, I suppose a bit of a bonus that uh, Kilkenny were. Going for uh, three in a row for the centenary final in Turles, and uh, you know to uh, knock them out a day after you know 
putting us out so often. It was, it was nice to knock them out, you know. Yeah, I was really. I remember the ball dropping, but there was only a couple of minutes left, wasn't there? And I think we were level, were we, with them? And and Dick O'Hara was. Uh, I was kind of like I was almost like war at that stage. And there was a huge crowd in Crow Park. That that was the Lazarus Malloy day. I think he was called out to stand for a football match yeah. earlier on that day. Yeah, uh, it was just incredible. I I don't think I've ever witnessed excitement like it. They were standing under seats and whatever a kind of a such, you know, but maybe, well, you, 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 did you never think of putting it over the bar at that point? No, you're, you, it was always, goal was always on your mind, wasn't it? Yeah, it never, it never even struck me. Now, <laughs> the, no, that, uh, I caught it sort of in front of Dick and went, went, uh, went, uh, went, went, went around him and uh, the, there was never, there was never a, a consultation in my mind, what was I going to do with it? There was only one team. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought came off. Uh, it's, it's a mar- and Colm, just to, just to, again, I'm no, oh, I'm jumping from one to the other, but God, we could be here all night. I, I hope they're they're not running out of tape or whatever. But we won, we won four in a row. But was only won four in a row from eighty two to eighty six. It's probably one of the greatest eras we've ever had. You know, to win a four in a row and whatever. Probably, if we're being honest, and jeez, I don't even be able to think about. We we should we left. I won't disrespect Killer One by saying it, but particularly myself I didn't hurl the ball but we left it probably at Club All Ireland that time but it was a great era for Buffers Alley and you, you were captain in 84 Colin. oh it was it was Tom yeah yeah I was captain in 84 Tom yeah, yeah. but it was, it was a great era for the Alley and in fairness there was a, one or two years before that where we got to finals and we didn't perform in it yeah. we probably left them behind I often thought that uh, maybe okay we won four in a row we always regretted we didn't win five, but we didn't win them, and that's it. Yeah. And the uh, match against Kinrowan was one of my uh, bigger disappointments. That, yeah. that uh, I, I don't know, I think we felt we felt that we could be Kinrowan. Yeah. Maybe it was, God, it was in our subconscious that we had played them in tournaments and that all down the line, and that was, wasn't much in it, but I think we always, we always felt we could beat Kinrowan. And like they played really well on the day, yeah. And yeah. maybe I think Crow Park might have got the better of a few of us too. I think. On, yeah. on, on, and, I, on, and, on. I, and I'd have to make Colin myself. I got the better of me that day. And, and it's the one game you were saying, Tony, you didn't watch all the seventy. It's the one game I've never looked at, ever, ever looked at again. I, I just. And well, you know what? It's lucky that we were able to look back to '89 when you did what. But I remember actually, now that you mentioned Barry Murphy, actually was one of our better players that day. He had a great game, sure. cornerback, hadn't he? Oh, he had, yeah. Yeah, he, he, Barry, Barry, Barry really stood up that day, and he, uh, he, he, he was one. Of, he, he was like a man possessed. He was fresh, whereas the rest of us seemed to be a little bit dead. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. we did. We didn't get. We didn't get going really, like. Yeah. yeah. And, I I was, often think I often think to an extent, Colin, I'm not blowing around to maybe the alley didn't get the credit they deserved over the period. You know, when the you know the, the we were, were Buffers Alley were labelled very physical. I suppose that's the put you know, on teams when they think of Alley were but there was an awful lot of good hurlers within the club that time really, wasn't there, Tony, you know, leading up that period in the eighties and the seventies, you know. But I, I always thought it was kind of an unfair label that that talked about her physicality sometimes more than talking about the hurling really, you know. Ah, yeah, but sure. I, th- I, th- I think, Tom, that uh, when a team is, uh, you know, successful year after year, that, uh, you know, I suppose uh, most people will grow to hate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It happened before we took over. It happened with Rat Newer in the in the in the in, in the seventies as well. That uh, they were winning, they were won four in a row, and you know, and, they, and they won a few more than along with it. That uh, Rat Newer were, uh, you know, the team everyone wanted to see beaten, then they wanted to see us beaten, and uh, we'll just go back to the last maybe eight ten years, and sure, everyone in the whole county wanted to see Elder beaten. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that uh, sort of. Uh, you know, when, when, when a team is successful like that, that is something that uh, will always come into it. You know? So, uh, Tony, sometimes it's nice not to be liked. <laughs> you, nearly, you, you know you're going well when you're not liked. I don't, I don't think it ever affected us. Not to, uh, that, uh, if we, if, if whether we were liked or weren't liked, I, I think you know as well as I do that it was nearly uh, an extra sport to us at times. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and Colin, just I, I was I I often thought you got great support from home, obviously with Anne and Mary, Tony, and g- the game was so much different. I mean, you were standing up full forward, no helmet, nothing, putting your hand up, and the fullbacks weren't 
overly kind probably that time. And Colm, yourself, I, I remember you telling me that time when, when you had your problem with your back, that at night you had to sit beside the heater just to get heat into it to, to stop the pain. I, I, I don't know if you remember, maybe I'm misery. I think you did say that to me. But the back injury then, it, it was fairly serious at the time, Colm, wasn't it? It, it kind of it maybe took a, took a little bit off your career at the end of it, did it? Ah, sure it did, Tom. I, it was something I lived with for uh, I had it in the mid seventies actually as well, and I I wore a horse for a couple of years, but got me going again, and I got up until eighty two or three. Then and I came back, and I was still able to play with the club. And unfortunately, it took its toll, and it got the better of me in uh, eighty eight, eighty eight, eighty nine. The year with our our glory year, we'll call it. Yeah, and. Uh, when I tried to get back along in, in in the latter end of 88, I t- think I played 15 minutes in a first round of the Leicester Club Championship, I think. Yeah. And that was it. After that, I thought that I might have got into the run again, but I'm afraid that was the last day I was able to get out. And actually, I had to have the operation after for it. And I had the operation the week before the, before the, before the club final. Yeah. So, thankfully... Well, when I say it, it, it Jordan, yeah, when I say it, Jordan, it, I mean you had a very long career, but that year was just it, it was just through injury that you, you you didn't have. But I think everyone would accept that. I think that year's victory, Tony, and it was culmination of everyone from Sil Murphy to Billy Lee to Paddy Sinnott to Jared Dempsey to the. I th- I don't think there was the, the collective was the whole thing really that year. It was a great day, Tony, wasn't eighty nine All Ireland Club final. I thought I'd say that uh, uh, I know I would have to look on it as the as uh, my greatest day in hurling anyhow. You know yeah. to see the joy that brought to uh, a lot of people there that uh, that you mentioned a few, a few minutes ago and to uh, you know a younger generation as well. You know that were only maybe knee high at the time and uh, you know the, the, what it brought to them for uh, for for us to be all Ireland champions. I think the the general feeling that it brought to the whole uh, to the whole area. At, at the time was something that uh, uh, we never could hardly have, have, have imagined would, would, would happen, you know. And uh, and in fairness, at that time, the support we got from uh, throughout the county, I think, was uh, was unreal. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, something that, uh, that uh, I would always be uh, be very, 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 very grateful grateful for, you know, that, uh, that uh, everyone seemed to be behind us. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's it's always I always think in these things it's always dangerous to mention names and wh- when you mention names you mention them as representative of everyone you know that that kind of a way but I suppose uh, j- just I, uh, last couple of minutes or that column I, I suppose the very normal question and it's a very hard one to answer but you've come across a lot of difficult opponents column over the years would it be anyone that would have stood out and I know that every opponent is difficult or club or county or was there anyone that stood out. Uh, for you, or is it a hard question? That's a hard question, Tom. In county, did there be so many that? Yeah. And there would be some of the ones that wouldn't be the popular ones. Would be the ones that could be the most difficult. But probably, I'd have to say that probably I'd, Eddie Care yeah. was coming towards the end of his career. But he would be my my most difficult anyway. Eddie Care. You had I had Paddy Kerman and Pat Carroll from Offaly. I have to say that were brilliant hurlers and caused a lot of problems to me as well. Yeah, and yeah. you know, club boys. I don't know. They'd only have to go up to Rat to Joe Murphy, yeah. Jim Ribbond. We had great battles with him, and probably you had Shawnee Kinsley, the Gorey, brilliant hurler, Jimmy Dempsey, the Martins. You know, that yeah. I think that all those, and actually in the, in the seventy six county final, I think it was the only time I ever played on Phil Wilson. Yeah, against Rapparees, yeah. and it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, you know that I, I I think he was in he would have been a great asset to wakes for still the seventy six. Yeah, but those I think Tom would be my yeah. my you know just probably a hope I haven't for that. Just yeah, every, uh, every other player. You probably made a few you made a few tough ones in your own field as well over the years. I'd say when you were training, that's all. Uh, you know no, they were the tough, they, they were the toughest ones, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I I, I often. 
Perry, Perry and Tony Dwyer were probably the two toughest at home. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, well, I tell you, you're right, because I often think that, you know, Kenny invented this kind of throw the whistle away and go out and train, but I think we, Buffers Alley were uh, playing that type of train, and they, they, Buffers Alley really did train as they played that time, Tony, didn't they? You know, Paddy Kavanagh wasn't too soft, or I remember Father Casey pulling on you one night in training as well. It wasn't wasn't too nice, as the fella says. Well, sure, if you ask about the uh, toughest opponents around in Tom, uh, you'd really have to start with uh, Paddy Kavanagh above in the uh, our little field above anyhow, there was about half the width of a normal pitch, and uh, you know, as well as I know what that was like, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I come in at the tail end, back, and backs and forwards on him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, a good idea of what, what that would be like in, a, in an enclosed space now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, know it, it, and you know what? There were such great times, a kind of a such as well, Tony. You know, and I suppose that we're coming to an end, and I, I, you could talk all night, a kind of a such, but. I suppose over the last 18 months, and, and I always think back in the club, we've had a tough 18 months in Buffers Alley, I suppose, with Marnie, Barry, Ger Sweeney, you know, Bill Murphy, uh, more lately in Ger and that. And I suppose it puts a different perspective on sport. But what I've noticed, Colm, it does, it does bring people together. It just shows the strength of the club and the GA as well when something goes wrong like that, you know. Well, when something goes wrong like that, Tom, I think that everybody comes in and we're all... We're all on the same level, and I think we're it's proven that we're all there for each other. And I think that you know, in bereavements or anything like that, I often wonder if that wasn't there, if we didn't have clubs, GA clubs, let it be soccer, rugby clubs, or what. I think it makes things a little bit easier. It gives you a bit of comfort to things like that. Yeah. I think, and like you know, that all those tragedies or anything that happens, I think it's great to have the comfort of your own own uh, area behind you, you know, no doubt. I think that's where it all starts. Yeah, there's no no doubt about that, Tony, you know, and, and uh, I, I suppose the last two questions, I, they're, they're unusual questions, I suppose, but one would be, you'd have no regrets, Tony, I mean, there, there wasn't that much you could have done, more than you did, and there's no regrets in, in hurling, really, as they're looking back or, or whatever. Oh, you'd have lots of regret, regrets, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Afterwards, you will see lots of things that you should have done maybe a little bit different. And uh, maybe you'd wonder, you know, if I had done that little bit different, we might have got a different result and so forth. But um, overall, uh, you know, the amount that, uh, of time running that you would have uh, have uh, invested in the game and all, you'd have no regrets whatsoever about that. You'd have... Just have the have the regrets maybe that you didn't do a little bit better on some occasions where you where you felt maybe that that you should have had done so. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, uh, you'd be thankful that you'd have had it so good. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? There's nothing beats playing, Column Really, is there when it all boils down? Nothing beats playing, Tom. I I I, I was uh, trained and went through was manager with Father Jim for a couple of years, but nothing beats playing and. Yeah. Uh, Great when you get a manager or a writer or anything like that for to get success, but nothing beats the buzz of playing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, you mentioned there in something there recently I read where you were half thinking of not playing yeah. in '96, but you play as long as you can, I think, because yeah. that could be the year. Yeah. And yeah. you've got to be there for it. And don't. There's no point in stopping playing until you feel really that you don't have anything else to give or to, you're not able. That's it. You're right. you're right. I think sometimes, Colin, you don't know how close you are sometimes when you give up a kind of, or when you're thinking of yeah. kind of a such and all. And just one thing, Colin, just you, you mentioned there on management. Um, you're being a bit uh, tough on yourself because you managed Buffers Alley in, 80, in 92 to the Leinster Club final, didn't you? you yeah, and, yeah. Not learning semi final. Is there too much emphasis on managers now? I mean, is it nearly gone beyond the beyond? The, the emphasis seems to be gone what the manager did wrong more so than what the players are doing wrong now. I think the manager, the manager really owes the team now. I think you yeah. know that it, players they find it hard to have a life. Really, I think this. Uh, I don't think there's nearly too much professionalism is a minute. That uh, it's great, all right, to play and all that, and probably everyone is doing it, and you have to do it. But uh, players, it's very hard for players to put 10, 12, 14 years playing now. I think that how long, how long can you stick at? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I think that 
you need you need a little bit of relaxation as well, I think, to it, yeah. especially with with championships and you know back doors, knockouts, everything. That uh, it's very hard for to keep the commitment up for over a number of years. Yeah, it's it's, it's and got- maybe and maybe do a bit of work as well. Well, that's that's the truth. It's nearly gone two series again. And Tony, just on the on the um the modern game, and you know the modern game is. I think the sixty eight Hall Ireland showed us that compared to the short pop on the pass, the sweeper. Have you any overall views on that, or or do you worry it's where's it all going to end, really? Well, I, I know, sir. Uh, uh, we have to uh, always move on and different different systems and all will come into place. But, uh, you know, when I just uh, look back on that uh, 68 hour there on the, on, the, on, the, on the telly now the other night and eight goals scored in it, there could have been 14, 16 goals scored. You know, and uh, the amount of uh, goal out action and uh, drills around the goal. Uh, what was it there? Uh, was it uh, some, some day lately there? I watched the... Um, uh, who was it playing on 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 the uh, on telly? Cork and Limerick, all Ireland semi final last year, and I think it was uh, something like uh, what three thirty two to one thirty one, you know, and yeah. and, and, and that, uh, that uh, there was nearly nearly a score every minute, which uh, you know, that, uh, when you look at the games now, I think nearly all the superstars are in the forwards. Yeah. And if I, or that uh, uh, you know when, when you look back and look at that sixty-eight hours and seeing the amount of hurling that uh, Willie Murphy, Dan Quigley, Mick Roach, and all has done, uh, they're not getting the opportunity to do to do that uh, now because uh, whether it's the ball has gone lighter or what, that the uh, scores are coming from way out the field and it's travelling travelling further. Maybe uh, something uh, a little bit in between. Would be a better mix that uh, that uh, I always thought that you know that uh, even looking at games or drills around the goal, you very 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 seldom see uh, goalies uh, calling into action. You know, a goalie could go through a game and never do anything else, only put out a ball maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think is uh, is not is 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 not good. You you have to have a I think a, a certain amount of uh, of action in or around the square area as well. Yeah, you know, but. Um, you know, there is things about it that uh, definitely is, is good to have moved on. But I just wonder maybe is the ball traveling that little bit uh, that little bit too fast where you have the uh, you know free takers going up and scoring 10, 12, 14 points in, in, in a game that uh, you know that uh, maybe it is a, is a bit much. Yeah, yeah. And yourself, Colin, would you have any views on that the modern game or is uh, it well I watched the game the other night there it was uh Kilkenny and Trayer, I think was it? Was it from last year, was it? Yeah. I think, yeah. Semi-final, maybe. And, you know, it was 22 or 3 points each. No goal, I think. At Limerick, yeah. And, yeah. and, like, you know, that I think that goals brings the thrill of the game. Yeah. It's typified. It's it the same. It was, it was uh, the three takers were, were uh, dominating the game as well. And yeah. it's the same before 12, 14 points, anywhere from their own 50 up. And... Maybe some of the frees maybe are coming a little bit easy, I think. And I don't know. That should the, I don't think there should be 12, 14 frees in any game, I think, for yeah. scorable frees. Yeah. And it is making it very difficult on backs, all right. That's what Tony said there about. Of course, I always said, even when I was playing, that uh, all the superstars were in the forwards. The backs didn't get any credit at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was the case the whole time, Colin. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, there's no doubt that for me, the, the the one thing the the three things I suppose with the high ball into the square and man for man catching it or not catching it the clash of the ash two lads going to the sideline and pulling and driving the ball they're they're completely gone and overhead striking and it's not good to take those out of, out of a game really you know that's that's where my worry would be but there are as you say Tony as well just the, the last question I'll ask you I suppose it, it, it's 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 a tough one to put on you but Tony if you were if you were advising an eighteen-year-old Tony Dorn about hurling or about what would you would you inv- ju- just tell him to enjoy it, or what would you say to an eighteen-year-old Tony Dorn now if he was starting out? Well, sure, I think the first thing you have to do is you have to enjoy it. You know, it's it's, it's very hard to uh, to uh, 
uh, mold anyone into a particular frame or tell them to do this or do that. You know, that's a, I think that's a, that's a, you know, the, the first thing that anyone has to do, I think, is, is enjoy the game, enjoy playing. And uh, okay, you have to uh, put in the hard work if you need, uh, if, you, if you're going to, going to get any success. You know, that, uh, that uh, it was a different game than back that time in the 60s, 70s. But, we still had to put in a lot of work into it, you know, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, we enjoy doing it, and we enjoy playing it, and I think it's something similar now today that you you have to you have to enjoy what they're doing to uh, to really get the best out of yourselves. Yeah, and that that's an, an enjoyment is the big thing, really, isn't it? You know, and that's the truth, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, Colm, I, <laughs> I I remember you advised me many years ago when I was very young. I, one of the few things I had in me hurling was able to hit the ball with my left and my right hand, which you told me to go away one winter and just hit the ball with your right hand because you, I think you started with your left, didn't you? I started uh, with the yeah. left arm. And you you said to me, I was left, and you said, go on, just keep practicing that on your right. And it, it was one of the few things that stood to me when I was hurling anyway. But would, what advice would you give to an 18 year old Callum Doran now if he was starting? Yes, we're, in uh, a different, we're in a different time, Tom, at the moment. Now, you know, even you say it's 96. It's very hard. Very hard to compare 96 with now. The same with us back 50 years ago, it's hard to compare. But I think the first thing, get the skills first. Get all the skills, get the striking, the catching, everything like that. Even let it be against the wall. Like what you said, if you were weak on the right, do it with the right. And I think get your skills first and uh, you have to be dedicated to it. But you have to enjoy it as well. And, uh, you know, you have to get satis satisfaction out of it. I think... I think uh, you can jump up after the match, but I think when you come home and have done well, have won hopefully, that's the satisfaction that night that you think about. That's the thing you've done it for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, that was important. And you were going to say something there, Tony, were you? I was just you know, talking about uh, you know, uh, work on a different size and weak size. I can well remember even in, uh, oh, Jesus, I was well established with my certain playing and uh, they'd power in the Patrick Park in an in, in team. And he come to you and he tell you, use your left every time tonight, or something, 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 something like that. You know that he 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 more or less banned you from striking it with the right side. He yeah. could see what you should do or shouldn't do, and he he tell you to to keep using that left. Yeah, and I often wonder, Tony. At last, Ned was a man. I would have had a lot to do with him in school, and that he he was he probably did. I won't say did more than anybody else because you can never say that. There's always someone did more, but he did an awful lot for Wexford Harland, didn't he, over the years? Made a major contribution to Wexford Harland. Major yeah. contribution. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, folks, I, I I think we're after we're after overshooting the mark, but it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. I suppose from my point, Colm and Tony. I suppose I can always say that I played with the Dorns, and that's that's a nice one to be able to say. And uh, that uh, at times now I was given out to an odd time column, not by yourself. He 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 let Definitely me. Was so, yeah. So, yeah, you you were always very quiet, but always tell me if I was doing anything wrong there. Now you know. I, I can I can always claim Tom. I played with Tom Dempsey and I played with Ger Dempsey. Well, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 Tony, I may, I may transfer that whole other Ger lad back from Glenbarrentown now. You maybe play with him as well. <laughs> but um, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, I, I was just saying you could talk all night. And all I'd say to, to both of you, to Colm, to Tony, to thank you from the bottom of our heart for what you've done for Wexford Hurling and the way you've promoted it, what you've done for Club Buffers Alley. And uh, stay safe and thanks for joining us tonight. It's a real pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Tom. Thank you.